Welcome everyone. Today I'd like to announce officially my next course, which will be on Martin Heidegger's philosophy and his question of being and why he asks the question of being. And also, I think that there is a possibility to respond to the question of being, which we will try to attempt in the course in which I have attempted to do in my book on Heidegger, which was published this year by Springer. The book is entitled Heidegger on Death and Being, an answer to the Science Frage to the question of being. The course will be based on the book and will therefore introduce the four main themes or path marks along the thinking path of Heidegger, which begins explicitly with a response to René Descartes and modern subjectivity and subjectivism. When Heidegger says in 1925, that ego cogito sum, I think therefore I am, doesn't really make sense, but what we would could instead say if any such formula makes sense is sum moribundus, I am insofar as I am towards my death. So there is a directedness, an orientation towards death as the utmost limit, but also as the own most possibility and at the same time as that which gives Dasein nothing to actualize. So we begin the course with an introductory lecture on two separate um, issues. The, one of the, uh, the first one is simply the question of death in Heidegger and why it's so important throughout his entire philosophy. But in the second introduction, introductory lecture, in the second half, I will go over and we will go over together the introduction of being and time. And I will do this now a bit also so you can see what to expect in the course. When you read being and time, Sein und Zeit, it's important to <clears throat> consider the first page before the text properly begins. There's here a quote by <clears throat> uh, from Plato, from Plato's Sophists. And he, Heidegger says here, Denn offenbar seid ihr doch schon lange mit dem vertraut, was ihr eigentlich meint, wenn ihr den Ausdruck seint gebraucht. But it seems obvious that you have long since been um, completely um, uh, familiar with what you mean with the expression to be zayant, or being. However, we are now perplexed to understand really what it means. So you can see here the Rückbezug, the relating back to a question that comes up in the dialogue on the sophists, the sophists who destroy with their seeming obviousness, with the obviousness about being and meaning, etc., and their instrumentalization of truth for the sake of winning an argument, they destruct access to the world. It, there's a destruction of what, uh, of, of the access to what is. And Heidegger then here says that we must ask for the first time, perhaps, or again, the question for the meaning of being. And this indicates also that there has been certain loss, a history of loss since Plato's time, as this was not picked up on before properly, to ask really what is the meaning of being. And time will prove to be the horizon. If you'd like to get the syllabus, by the way, for the course, just follow the link down below. So we will read Being and Time, the introduction, which means 
why Heidegger thinks it's necessary to, ex as he says, explicitly repeat the question of the meaning of being and what it is that he could mean, at least preliminarily in the introduction with being, with Dasein, but also with um, phenomenology and ontology. So we clarify the methodological approach, also what Heidegger means by a destruction, a destruction of the history of ontology. And the other main focus then will be uh, for the full lecture on being and time will be death and or Dasein's own most possibility because it is death is the heart of the book. And it is only by having gone through death that it will become clearer what Heidegger means by ecstatic temporality, why there is a directedness of Dasein towards his future, and how ecstatic temporality and finitude belong together. And it is in the analytic of death, in being and time, that Heidegger's thinking makes a crucial experience, which is that in the moment where Dasein pushes itself towards its own most ability to be, and it's the most intense moment of its being, is in the moment of its death, is in the moment where death finitude fully shows itself. And it is here that Heidegger makes the experience of the withdrawal of being, which will be pivotal for the thinking of the event. So, and the history of being, and by the way, also technology and poetic language, which would be the other themes. So the four themes of the course are being in time and Dasein, the event and the history of being, technology and, and framing, and then as the last chapter, poetic language in the world as the fourfold, the four regions of divinities, mortals, sky, and earth, of this nearing, close, opening, coming closer through a disappearance of Gestalt. And so in being and time, there are two two crucial moments. One of them is the retranslation of Aletheia, no longer just as truth, but as unconcealment. This together with the thought of simultaneity and equiprimordiality, namely to think unconcealment as simultaneous with concealment, which Heidegger not, doesn't yet fully achieve in being in time because the language isn't ready yet. But he will, the language will open itself up to this over the decades. Together with death and Dasein's own most being towards its death, to its impossibility of being, this push and re withdrawal is the moment in which Heidegger understands or sees, begins to see that being is, in, is itself inherent withdrawal. But as it withdraws, that indicates that, of course, it must have been there, but also, not just that it must have been there, but what withdraws shows itself. It shows itself because it withdraws itself, because it is no longer available. And it shows itself as to be preserved, to be safeguarded and kept. So the second lecture then will be on the contributions of philosophy mostly, the thinking of the event or the Ereignis, and the history, so-called the history of being. And this is going to be a very difficult lecture obviously, and it's however pivotal for anyone who wants to understand Heidegger's writings on technology. You will be blind in those essays if you have not at least glimpsed or tried, attempted to grasp briefly 
what it is that Heidegger means by eigens. Because the Gestell or in framing the essence of technology as it were only begins to shine through for Heidegger himself and his thought through the eigens, through the event. It cannot be thought any other way. And we will, by the way, all the time go over different translations, different ways of translating the German into English. So we will not just use standard translations. I will not just use the standard translation that's currently accepted by the powers that be within academia, who determine what is correct speak uh, when it comes to philosophers, and who determine that Seinsgeschichte must always mean history of being. Perhaps it's closer to the tidings of being, or even the tidal waves of being. And that Ereignis must mean events. Perhaps Ereignis means something else. Perhaps Ereignis means rather the, well, the realm that throws itself into its openness and as such withdraws. Perhaps that's closer to Ereignis, because this is how Heidegger describes the Ereignis. Which is, of course, has, you could say, an eventual character, but isn't exhausted by some event that occurs along a timeline. But it is only from this stars that all of a sudden the Gestell begins. So technology as Gestell is in framing or positioning or positionality begins to be visible, shows itself as coming from metaphysics, but also as rearranging and restructuring the world. At the same time, of course, as in so far as here it has a concentration, a violent concentration of power, at the same time, this already indicates its withdrawal, its own concealment, off from itself, and, and therefore a turning. A turning so that another world does become possible if, and only if, we begin to think the unthought. So death is the energy source, you could say, of that which has remained unthought in philosophy. And this is what we're trying to get to. So there is a response to the question of being, but of course it cannot lie, as Heidegger himself says, in an isolated proposition. Instead, and instead of turning philosophy into something that is museal, of, you know, of a museal, museum graveyard uh, where we just have historical interests in all the different philosophers and a perfectly exhaustive account of everything that's ever been said, etc., etc. Thinking here wants to come alive again. By thinking through that which hasn't remained unthought and has then to has to be added on, but no, no, in a way that what wasn't picked up on by the tradition. Hence, in the beginning, hear this quote from the sophists. We have become perplexed by what it means to be. This question is an old question. Heidegger does not make up anything. He doesn't invent the question of being. And it is precisely in this moment of being able to let go, of being able to, to think through again that which has been thought, which was what we will do here, that a genuine future opens up. So contra accelerationism, which would claim that the future has already happened and it's all just moving in a linear fashion in one direction, causally, perfectly, almost ridiculously, childishly causalistic uh, understanding, uh, of, of history, so-called. It's the unthought that can twist free and twist free and then throw open another future, another that which is to come. So you see it, the ecstatic temporality is that which opens up another future. And it is prevalent and, and present in all of Heidegger's thought. So we will go through being and time the analytic of Dasein, where Dasein gets to know itself and its fundamental ontology of how it is that Dasein is in the world and makes sense of the world. And then moves into the Ereignis, where death again remains pivotal to address the question of being, 
this realm in which the human being stands and responds to the question that addresses the human being forevermore. And coming out of this abyss, of this abysmal thought, this off-ground, this withdrawing, grounding thinking, we move into the gestell, the operations of the gestell, which produces and challenges forth everything to be standing ready as a resource, even if now mostly um, even digitally. This is exactly the kind of a standing resource where a standing reserve is something translated which doesn't even have to be um, uh, uh, properly even just standing ready, but can be made ready in a pure replica, a digital replica, immediately at any given moment. Um, <clears throat> which has, of course, you know, striking implications for time and our understanding of time. And ultimately, we will move into the question of, of language, of poetic language. Why it is that Heidegger says that language is the house of the truth of being. For example, and truth, of course, means the concealment of unconcealment and the unconcealment of concealment. What is it that language, poetic language, can achieve? What is its mandate? What does it mean, for example, to also? And this is one of the questions always with with Heidegger or any thinker, a genuine thinker. Is what does it mean to read and study philosophy? So that philosophy comes alive. But of course, without waking the dead, because that would be deadly as well. But to let what is still rich and wealthy and in exuberance of itself, let this be what speaks, and that which has exhausted itself, let this die. So, this course is, and I, I taught the course, I will. I will add a few um, lectures to uh, to it this year, a few new videos. But uh, it, I've, so last year I had about 25 students and there were some who had already some very strong familiarity with Heidegger and others had absolutely no idea. But uh, as far as I can tell and what I've heard back uh, from, from the participants, it um, helped them understand Heidegger better and also for their own projects um, to understand certain thinkers that are in the vicinity of Heidegger either before him or after him and um, So it's open to anyone of course the, the this course is difficult it does require uh, Some time of you not just for the seminars, but you would have to listen to the lecture every week and also do some reading which is always uh, crucial in philosophy if you take it seriously and here then um, however we, it is a full introduction to Heidegger's thought and just to mention briefly the technical uh, side of things there will be probably seven seminars five lectures but seven seminars in total which gives us enough time then to get into the really crucial uh, questions and we will read some of the most pivotal, best-known texts by Heidegger. Excerpts from Being and Time, excerpts from the Contributions to Philosophy, then the essay, The Question Concerning Technology, and essay, the letter on humanism, for example, for the question of language. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below the video. And if you want to get the syllabus, just follow the link down below. Enrollment will open very soon, and I will let you know when it does. So thank you very much indeed.